Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 137 at scavengerlife.com. And we are talking about what's going on in our store this week. So we're it's really starting this, huh? This is it. It's starting. This is the beginning. <laughs> yep, it is. Okay, so we've had a very long a week, and we had Ryan's a sister and her husband come and visit us for the weekend. From Boston, all yep. the way from Boston. They came on, I guess, Friday. Yep, Friday, and they just left Monday morning, so. Which is today, so we're a little late to get this done, just because we've been busy all weekend. But, um... So what was interesting was, and I'm sure people can ad- identify this if you have, if you have an eBay store. We spent two days before they came <laughs> organizing our guest room, which is kind of our eBay room. So we spent two days basically boxing stuff up. I mean, all of our unlisted inventory and packing supplies and yeah, it cardboard was, boxes. It was crazy because like. I mean, I'm sure you guys are similar where stuff just gets into big piles and you go through the piles. So you have a huge pile of jackets, a huge, you know, four boxes of books. And these piles are (laughs) never ending because we always are adding to them. Right. And, uh, and, you know, and we're getting like weird sized boxes from the stores when we see them for free and they just start piling up and boxes of old bubble wrap that we'll grab and so but it was good though because we spent two days we cleaned up the whole room where it didn't even look like we had an ebay store it looked beautiful that i wish that we could keep that room because yeah it's our office slash we can try let's try we can try why not yeah we can i would love that but so so in some ways it was very good practice for us because we got to actually clean that room. We hadn't done it for about a year or so, and yeah. we realized it what a cool space it was. <laughs> or we remember you know? what a cool space it, it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of cleaning. And then this week uh, we had much better sales. You know, we made about a we grossed a thousand dollars last week, and this week we grossed about eighteen hundred. Oh, good! And so when you know I say gross, that just means before expenses. So it's right. before eBay and PayPal and yeah, you know inventory costs. So just so people are aware, that that's the numbers we say. But our sales have been getting up a little bit more. Yeah, they, um, they've been slowly. It was funny because there there was one day where almost nothing was happening. I, I don't think anything happened, and then the next day. It was crazy. We had sales all day long. It was yeah. like one of those weird up and down spikes, you know. Well, it's it's interesting. We had a day last week where it was like the perfect eBay moment. Why we love doing this, where it was like seventy five degrees outside with no humidity. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Which is very strange for the for where we live in the a summertime. And we had the doors open. We had the radio on. The cats are walking around us, you know, <laughs> taking photographs and listing. And, you yeah. know, our phone is making the cha-ching noise every 30 minutes or so. Yeah. And every time something would sell, we would talk about the story of every item yeah. that sold of, like, where we found it. And what's always fun is when you have those really random days where the most random stuff is yeah, selling. Right. Like hardware and sweaters and paintings you're like what yeah and you know yeah things that either have been in our store for a while or just things that we never thought might actually sell and uh, and they sell for full price and it's just those are the days we live for you know and that's when ebay is good and we always try and remember those days when they're slow and where you know you want to complain about it but you know there's no need to because we always know that the good days will come and that yeah. really it's all about the averaging of the good and bad days and that's a business. You right. Know? And what made us feel good about that really high day because there were slow days before it that that averaged out our week. You know, that, right. that day really helped us. I mean, and I think that's interesting too is that um, I feel like this summertime, it feels like it has been slower. Slower than last summer, you're saying? Than summers before, you know. I mean, it's it's kind of tough because, you know, our store has evolved. So it's hard to compare this year versus, like, the first year we started on eBay just because we had a different kind of store and different stuff. Yeah, it's just different. I mean, and, you know, and and I see people complain on their eBay blogs about (laughs) this stuff. But really, I mean, ultimately it's been slow, but it's been steady for us at least. And, uh, you know, we're paying our bills. and. Well, we just always have to take our own advice. That's the thing. I mean, we always tell ourselves, like on that day where it was really dead, completely nothing sold. We were just like, we just have to take our own advice, which always is 
keep working. It right. comes back. Don't freak out. You know, yeah, don't when get things depressed. Right. I mean, you know, like what can you do? And that's either <laughs> you can move to different platforms. So if you still it's want to run a business, you, you can go on Amazon or Etsy or Bonanza or <laughs> Bonanza or start your own a website and sell it there. I mean, you know, that's a form of action. Or you can just a list more, which is what we do. Yeah. Or if you can list different kinds of stuff. I mean, that's kind of why we have a huge a varied inventory because right. sometimes we feel like if we aren't selling enough jackets, well, then let's start selling shoes. Something and else. if shoes don't sell fast enough for us, we sell art, you know? I and think the hard thing about last week was we had, because um, we were cleaning up that room, we were double timing. So I was photographing um, just to move stuff out of that room and you were measuring. And so I wasn't able to list. So it's hard to feel like you're in control if you can't. Be like, I'm just a mad lister all week, you know. I was like, I'm not doing any. I mean, I was working, but I felt like I'm not doing anything, you know. Yeah. So that was a bit of a hard thing. Yeah. But it was good, though. I mean, we got a lot of photos yeah. taken. And, uh, a lot. But that, that day where we did sell 10 things, and it was, it was great because it was all the bread and butter stuff. It was like $20 to $50 items. Yep. Some of them had a lot of of people are watching the item some didn't have any yeah uh some had been up for a year or a little more and some was stuff we had just put up right this past month so i think it's a good example of for it's new people to hear this is like you have or we have n no control over our sales yep none yeah because people often ask us and they have asked us in the past who is your audience you know who are you trying to sell to how do I get more people to watch my stuff? You know, how do I get offers? And we just tell people like there's no control. The best yeah. you thing you can do is take a lot of good pictures, write a clear description, and put a competitive price on it right. with make offer on it, just so people can give you an offer if they want. But yeah. uh, you know, we just basically get ready so when people want to buy, we're gonna be there. We're there. That's yeah. it. Oh, I wanted to mention something that I sold this week that I've mentioned before, which was this little hand vacuum. It's a it's a Hoover hand vacuum, and it's one of those ones. It's not like um a, those like Black and Decker like shark things. It's one that has like the rolling um, brushes, and they're really strong, and they're great for like a car or just a smaller space. I find that maybe they aren't made like that these days, but you know, it's yeah. got the the belt. It's engine on it. Right. You know? It's got that belt roller brush thing and they're pretty powerful and they're just a handheld thing. I think I've sold three of these. I buy them for a couple bucks. The reason why people get rid of them for so cheap is because the belts are worn out. So you just buy another belt for a couple bucks on eBay for that model. Change the belt out. Takes two seconds. And I sold it for $50. Yeah. I think people so. like them too because... Those ones that you buy at Walmart, they don't have the belt on them. It's just like a, uh, a, a, a suction. I think we've had one like that before. And it stinks. And you try to vacuum stuff up. And other than just like some very light, dry Dust. coffee grounds, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. These are just like basically a vacuum cleaner. Right. But, but a handheld. A handheld one. Yeah, it's got the, the brush on it. It's right. that roller brush. And um, so those are things to look out for because they look real junky. And you're like, eh, what am I going to do with that? They sell for $50 right. every single time. And that's a good example of stuff it's we like. Like it's not. I love It's it. not vintage. It's not new. It's just like one of those real practical things that I just don't think are easy to find. Right. Or at least if people do, they're probably not very cheap. Right. So, so that's something to look out for. That is one of my favorite sales is yep. the little vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So now we've just created all this competition against us. Don't buy them. No, it's <laughs> no, fine. Because I can't can always find them. them. I can't always find if them. If you can so. find them, sell them. Like those are the kind of things where we know they sell, but we can't always find them. Yeah. Like, I found three total. Right. It's not easy to find, and that's and and that's why I'm never worried about competition yeah. because it's really about the scavenging part. I mean, if you can find a million of those things and sell them, God bless Go you. For but it. yeah, they're just rare. Yeah, you know? I think the funny thing about that vacuum thing is it was also one of those surprise sales. The first one I got. I was like, eh, this is whatever. I'll sell it for I 20 bucks. It. Oh, you found, oh, I oh, found oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's mine. So um, when I looked up that model, because it was a Hoover, 
I was so surprised at how much they sold for. I'm like, these sell for $50, $60, $75, depending on how clean they are. It was one of those things that I got for a dollar dollar, at the flea market. And that's why we love buying cheap or inventory that doesn't cost a lot, just because you can take chances, you know, at a dollar I'll take a chance on anything without doing a lot of deep research because it's a buck. It's a buck, yeah. And the great thing is when you you pay for something for a dollar, you're going to make that dollar back. You're going to double it. You're going to triple it. I mean, there's no doubt, you know. So (laughs) if almost anything you can buy for a dollar, you can always sell for it. $10. $10. Mm, yeah, minimum $10. Which is still a, an incredible profit. Like yeah. What retail store makes, you know, 1,000% profit? Right, exactly. You know? so. But like people have talked on the blog, and we've talked about it too, I mean, we are trying to up our game, trying to find inventory that we can sell for more, and we are starting to be willing to pay more yeah. for items. Yeah, yeah. You know, so buying things for $25 that we think will sell for $700. Right, exactly. But the thing, though, is that it's not like you we can just go out and do that all day long. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make it any easier. It's still... It's still the search and the hunt and the research. It's still and... very difficult to find that kind of, that right balance where you're willing to pay 25 or $50 for something, but then it has to be able to sell for, you know, 20 times that, right, 10 exactly. times that. Yeah, I mean, the process is the same. It's the same thing, just like you always say. So we're still buying dollar items right. <laughs> to fill in the gaps. I mean, you know, it's basically you're just finding where you can can get the most profit for your buck, yeah. you know. So this week, too, you know, especially with having guests here at the house, I've definitely been feeling like being pulled in many directions Yeah. lately. Yes. You know? And I think this happens sometimes when you run at your own store is that this can happen because the store never stops. Right. And so we start getting involved in all these other little kind of projects. Like we posted those photos of like that rental house we're getting ready yeah. for. And that's been a lot of work. You know, we've been, we've been doing these uh, video jobs, which is our kind of our other kind of our original career was doing a video work. So we're doing another job at the end of this month and right. then another one in September. So it's, yeah, piling up a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's hard to focus on your store sometimes. Like, I wasn't even able to ship this morning because I had to um, bring them to the train station. So, you know, it's things like that where you're like, it can wait a little bit longer. Right. But it, but it's tough because I'm used to doing this every single day, yeah. you know. Yeah, so like today, between finishing this podcast and editing it and putting it online and then uh, shipping everything... That's my day. Today's kind of gone. Right, you know? exactly. So, yeah, that's tough. But I really do love everything we're able to do. Like, I feel like I'm being pulled in many different directions, but I don't feel like any of them are things I hate doing. And that's the difference. Like, right. That's the difference from the feeling I used to have yes. when I worked a job where, you know, I just felt like I never had time for myself. Now I just feel like... It's almost an abundance of opportunity, you know, <laughs> which is such a luxury problem it's to true. have. It's true. You're like, I have so many cool things happening at once, you know. That's how I feel. So, yeah, yeah I agree. And we've talked about it. I mean, you know, we have not enlisted that much during the past two months. You know, the when the summertime started, we started traveling a lot, and we just have not enlisted a lot. But again, I stress it's been okay because we have that big inventory we're still having steady sales yeah. and this is this is why we did all that work up front so when we you know couldn't spend a lot of time at listing inventory then then it just keeps going it keeps going right. like the and the store kind of runs itself you yeah know? we've seen that definitely yeah which is great yeah god thank god it was interesting to me having your a sister here because she's a little younger than you yeah but she gets it totally what you and it's your mom do. Yeah. Because both of you have stores. You know, we took her to that estate sale when we were up in Boston. You right. Know, yep, she yep. she gets it. Yeah. And she's got that whole style. It's just so interesting though, she seems uninterested in doing that for a living. And yeah. And it's kind of weird that we think everyone should want to, to, to do this. <laughs> I know. But at the same time, I just like feel like... It's like a cult. <laughs> I feel like if your sister has that personality where she compl- complains about her job and, you know... Right. I don't know. It's just... Well, it's it's like that with a lot of people we meet where we're like, wait, you get what we're doing. You get 
the idea behind it. You have style. And you seem to hate what you're doing. So, so why therefore... This... It's just so interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I guess, yeah. I guess it's kind of... There's a big leap yes. between intellectually understanding that you can buy and sell things on the internet and then the idea that by doing that you can make enough money to pay for your mortgage and your health care and your I gas think and food. I'm, I'm trying to really picture like I know people when they hear that we sell on eBay they really think it's a hobby they're like that's cute you know and you guys totally know what I'm saying but you're like no 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 you don't understand and she knows our whole life is like yeah. revolves around doing this hmm. But I think what you said, there's like a mental leap that has to be taken where you're like... And no one else can take it for you. Right. No one else can do it. Like you have to have that dreaded feeling of having to go back to work on Monday morning, which a lot of people we know do. Right. So you're like, but it's a safety net. It's a safety net. That paycheck is a safety net. Pure and simple. That is interesting too. Like it's Monday morning ish right now. now. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I can't remember the last time I had that feeling on a Sunday night that nope. of a Monday it's morning. It's been so long. So long, yeah. I never I never have that anymore. Nope. I just remember having that feeling of like, okay, Monday's happening. This is gonna be a long week. Like it's right. not just one day or two days, it's like, uh, this is it's gonna be a five long five days. Week, five or six know? days, yeah. So Yeah, no, I love not having that feeling. I completely forget that it exists. We know it does for some people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so what we're doing for the rest, so it's August now, it's the beginning of August and you know, our thing this w- month is we leave at the very end of august like august 29th august 29th yeah. and we're gone for um for the whole of september all of september and the a, first and a little bit of, of october. october so it's a long time yeah so it's kind of that whole thing about like i get worried that uh you know i think we've done a pretty good t- job at running our store full time yeah but it gets tough i don't know if there's a limit to how much time we can be away from our store so far so good so that's why this month we're really full force got a list listing like tomorrow yep dude that is like my job i would love to see 50, 50 things done today. <laughs> you love it when i get on that <laughs> roll when i'm like Give me another cup of tea. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't come in the same room as me. Right. <laughs> Every so often, Ryan, Ryan gets on do you these. want lunch? No, don't talk to me. <laughs> Make Where? me lunch and leave it on the table. <laughs> She's just in that zone, and I love it, you know? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. That's... Well, it really helps not to have any distractions. Because really, I mean, we, we talk about this. We preach this. You know, if you can do 20 things a day, yep. 20 days in a row that's a lot that's 400 i mean some some people only have 400 things in their store yeah. so if you can add 400 that's items to stuff. your store you know that's a lot it's just so easy to get distracted yeah. you're like i'm gonna do the dishes i'm gonna do the laundry Man, don't do it how about, how about <laughs> don't this? Do i will do all the i'll be in charge of the cats <laughs> yeah. the dishes i'll cook dishes yes i love it I'll vacuum. i love it oh i love it i'll mow the grass yes wow this is really extreme yeah. i'll do everything <laughs> Oh, great. The only thing you have to uh, do is shower uh-huh. and list. Okay, great. And eat when you cook for me. Right. Great. I love it. Okay. I love so that okay, life. so that's been said publicly. <laughs> Everyone has got to hold me Let's accountable. Let's see what now. this is like at the end of August. We'll do a count yep. of how much. We can. We okay, can. So Absolutely. I want to list stuff because I okay? want to make money. Man. Okay. We like the uh, numbers. So y- is your okay? Okay. With that? So what's the date we've listed? Today it's August fourth. So we start at a zero. Let's okay. see what it's like at the end of August, how many items actually got listed. Well, how are we going to know how many got listed? Because stuff sells at the same time. I, you, you'll you'll I keep can track count. of the numbers. I okay. can count. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Cool. So why don't we see? Yeah. We'll see how much. We'll see how much yeah. I can list. Let's just see. Yeah. 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 Let's With let's a see. sparkle in his eye. Let's just see. There's a little sparkle. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Okay. So uh, we had some questions that were sent in uh, by email. You can go to the side of the blog at uh, scavengerlife.com and there is a, a little 
a document there that you can type in a question. If you don't want to wait for us to do it here, you can also just leave a, a question on the blog, and us and whoever else can help you answer that if yeah, you need actually, a faster answer. It's been so good having other people on the blog commenting and answering really Right. great answers because and things we didn't even I mean, think about if yeah. i'm like i can't answer that for another like two hours it gets answered by someone i'm like that's amazing actually like someone just an hour ago asked a question like i'm about to go on vacation i want to put my store in vacation mode and change these settings on my items the handling the time, handling time but i don't have a store so it's making me do it one by one and charging me each time and he's and i'm like so I answered it immediately. I was like, yeah, that's why you get a store that's because a you reason. can bulk edit, you know? You can bulk edit and I don't think, like he said, you can't put vacation settings right. just on your regular one-by-one one item. Right. So, which I didn't realize that. Until. So that's another reason why it's worth the store subscription because right. you can manage the store easier. It gives you access to that Manager Pro, right? Yeah, it's, like sell, it's called Seller Manager Pro. And I didn't even know it was a thing because we've had a store for so long. But it, it makes the way you view your items differently. It gives you different options. It gives you a, a numbers for the past week, the past yeah. month, the past 90 days. It lets you bulk edit, like we were saying. He'd be able to put... He said he has a thousand items. Holy shit. He, he has a thousand items and he doesn't have a store. That's I would love madness. for that person on the blog to actually, if they didn't mind, like telling people how much in fees he was paying. I just feel like a listing a thousand items. The listing fees would be high without yeah. a store to bring the price down. But Who knows? if you do the numbers and it works, go for it. Okay. So the first question is from Diana. She asked, we mentioned Ting for cell phones, but how about internet? We'd love to fire AT and T for for bad for bad service. A, a service. So we've talked about it. We switched. We we called it some digital scavenging, where we yes. switched from AT and T, where we we're paying a hundred bucks each a month, to now our bill's about to come up, and it's going to be forty five dollars combined for both of us. That is, it's crazy. Forty five dollars combined. Yep. It's just because that is crazy. we're just being charged for what we actually use versus the way we were doing it with AT&T. Right. They were just charging us a flat fee for a certain amount, and it didn't matter if we didn't Like if I never talked on not. the phone all month, it didn't matter. They do roll over your uh, minutes, but they still charge you for it. But <laughs> yeah. that's the thing. I don't talk on the phone a lot, but I use a lot of data, so I yeah. don't want a lot of minutes. So anyway, yeah. so she's asking, and it's a good it's question about internet, internet how you can get cheaper internet and that's a real problem we've never been able to solve that problem yet because right that's a one problem with america is that we most people only have one maybe two options for your internet right connection to at your home so i think in certain parts of our county we have two options i think we could get time warner here you if mean we comcast Com comcast yeah, yeah i think we could get comcast but we use um century link because right. that's who was here but but it's really there isn't enough competition so you know yeah either one of the two carriers have no uh incentive to lower their prices or, or give you higher bandwidth yeah. all that i mean we have like it's painful so sorry i i don't have an answer for that about how to get cheaper internet or better i wish i service did. from home i wish so if anyone knows of a better a service, but... If you have access to fiber, I am jealous of you. <laughs> Fios, I wish. That yeah. stuff is deadly fast. Yeah. Amazing. We even rented an apartment once just to use the Fios. Because we had a big job and we, and, <laughs> we, had, and a it, we had a lot of uploading we had to do. So we went on Airbnb and yep. rented an apartment in a city close by that specifically had files and we just sat there all day and night and uploading <laughs> yeah it was great but they probably thought we were crazy but it was great for, it's for us it was uh, yep it was good so fios if you can okay kathy b asks i need a primer step-by-step -step regarding dumpster diving specifically books i'm scared of rats being arrested getting filthy getting stuck how do you get in and out without being caught is it worth it so i think this comes up because we've done a couple shows lately about like uh going into trash the dumpster picking, yeah. yeah and picking trash 
specifically, like things I found in the gar- garbage uh, with a, with Martin. A Martin. He go listen to that interview if you haven't. So let's be really specific here. Now we, I mean, maybe a couple times we've done it, but we don't actually go to dumpsters and jump in and like yeah. I'm not knee deep in trash going through bags and neither is that guy up in montreal yeah martin's not doing that Uh, martin's not going into dumpsters what he does and what mainly we do is you just walk around the streets on trash day when people put their trash out onto the corner and you would just be surprised that people leave out perfectly great things in a box out in the open in the box right or like what it's martin talks about is that you can kind of tell if a bag is like if it looks juicy you kind of Ew. avoid that it's it's like the food bag or if it looks like real bulky you can tell that there's like hard goods yeah. in it and that's yeah. when you just kind of politely open up the top and you know he'll find maps and books and trinkets yeah, yeah. and shoes especially if you're looking for books like i don't know if you live near a city or what but i swear when i lived in boston and in new york boxes of books people love getting rid of books it's just they put them out all the time like here's a box of books get them out of here and no one's going to arrest you because unless as long as you're being friendly about it and not just yeah. like throwing trash everywhere People are probably glad you're taking it, and and like we've told, said, it's before people often leave stuff out in the open because they they hope someone takes it before it gets thrown away. Yeah, they're kind of just being a little too uh, lazy to take it somewhere to to donate it. Yeah, and you can often tell when you see a bunch of trash out on the street if it's a house clean out or if someone's moving from their apartment. Right. Like, it's very it's obvious. It's very obvious. Because there's, like, junky furniture or yeah. what, or lamps or something. Like, boxes of hangers. And then you just assume the bags are also the other stuff as well. And right. you just start going through it. I mean, unless someone's like, wait, that's my stuff I'm putting into the moving truck, which I have done before by accident. <laughs> so, Kathy, the way we do it and the way a Martin does it is just wherever it you uh, live... Figure out where the the, the, the cool and uh, nice neighborhoods are, the ones where people have uh, money. Yeah. <laughs> and figure out, it's very easy, go to your county or a city's dumpster a website, the, the trash s- sanitation, website. Yeah. and figure out when their trash days are and just take a walk or drive around and just pull up and just start picking. Yeah. You know? You don't have to get garbage juice on you. Yeah. So I'd love to, I hope she follows up. I'd love to hear more from her. Okay, so Gordy says, I got a great deal on a Zebra thermal printer, but setting it up on my PC has been exasperating. I'm fairly PC savvy, but I still haven't got it printing satisfactorily. (laughs) Satisfactorily. Satisfactorily. Is that a word? (laughs) Satisfactorily. (laughs) The funny thing about Zebra printers is I thought that they did work with the PC just fine. It, I thought it was the Mac that they didn't well, work Well, I mean, with. he. I think he's just uh, saying he's just still having some his problems. problems and and yeah. for people that don't know what this is, the Zebra thermal printer is kind of the printer that is used for a lot of like higher-end retail places where right. it prints – your it's receipts and it can also print your ebay uh, labels yeah it's on a thermal it's paper thermal. so yeah. like if you guys remember way back when faxes were thermal it's like it doesn't use ink it heats up the paper and the paper turns black on the heated part so it's great for ebay uh, labels because it's really cheap it's like yeah. a couple of cents a label they're real easy and their stickers. The ink so doesn't run. And like, you can take it off and print it. Like if you get something from Amazon, that's all thermal That's a thermal printer. printer label. So we actually tried to get one too. And we actually bought one on eBay really cheap. And then we tried to hook it up through our Mac. And they, for some reason... They don't have drivers for they it. They don't have drivers for Mac. So I'm not surprised that it's a little complicated with PC. The good thing is we found a lot of uh, videos online. Like go on... Uh, yeah, on YouTube. Uh, YouTube. There were people that had hacks for the Mac, but very often... It didn't work for me, yeah. They needed us to subscribe to, like, one of those $10 a month services in order to get some software that would make it work. And the whole point of this is to save 
uh, money. Yeah, I'm like, I print all my eBay labels for free through eBay. Why would I pay for a service to use a thermal printer? So for us, what, what we've done is what, and we talked about it, is that it, it, did you buy that like, like a yeah, sticky so, paper? Yeah, so what I do is I have a brother laser printer. I buy labels that are on sticky paper. It's two labels per sheet. And that's just how I do it. And I love it. I could not live without it. I mean, I wish I could use a thermal printer, but I can't. And so the only thing is you have to... I don't even have to cut it. No, it's perforated in the middle. So the way you can set up eBay labels is so that it doesn't print a receipt on one Mm. side. It just prints the top label. Right. So then I rip the top label off. The second label is still under there. And then I get a stack of those, you know, label number two, and I throw them back in the printer, and right. I print the second label, like, the next time around. And plus, I think we figured out it's just a couple of cents Yeah, it's a nothing. Label. And because though that um, the paper that the label is on is wax paper, but on the flip side, it's regular paper, so I print my invoices on the regular paper <laughs> because I print, like, so many invoices right. every time. I mean, it looks fine. It's just paper. So I use it three (laughs) times. That's how much of a scavenger I am. So I have not had luck with a thermal printer. I think they're great. I wish I could use them. I wish they were easier to use. But alas, they are not. Yeah. All right. So uh, Rachel sent in one of these long stories. So let me just kind of give you a brief version about it. So she sold an item to a buyer the buyer sent her a message, opened a case against her with a mean its message saying she sent the, the wrong item. Right. And she did. And what happened was it's happened to us. It's, yep. it's before. She sent two people. Two different items. Right. Yeah. So she wrote to the other it's woman saying she was going to get the wrong item and asked if she could mail it to the other right. it's, it's lady, which we've done. It's before. Yeah. And she'd reimburse them for shipping. Right. And, and sometimes we've had luck where buyers are very understanding. They just want to be told what's going on. They've actually done it. It's worked out good. Yeah. But this one buyer who was causing her problems got the right item and then kept the old item oh, and God. didn't mail it back. And so... Uh, she called eBay and eBay said that the buyer couldn't be forced to do anything. Right. Like that's what she sent. And, yeah. you know, um, so what she's asking is this, she did some investigative work uh-huh. and found this woman on Facebook oh. and found out where she works. So she has her phone number at work and I guess she's asking, should she call this, this woman at work and confront her and just be like, why don't you send... The wow. item you didn't supposed to get, why didn't you send that back? You know, is that too stalkerish, or should she just like eat it? You know, it is, and really she's gonna lose fifty bucks, right? You know? Which is a good and, chunk of change. And what she's, what she ends with is like it's just really bugging her, and I yeah, know it's bugging. that feeling. I know that just feeling. Like, it's like this injustice. It's like I hate feeling like someone's getting over on me. Well, you and know? and also the the thing that's a bummer about um, customers like that is. This person, Rachel, did everything she could to fix the problem. She actually fixed the problem. Right. Um, And yet this person is still being a crazy person. You know, not a very nice person. And that can really, like, just like you said, we had the same thing. I sent shoes to two different people. And I said, hey, guys, please send these to each other. I'll reimburse you guys for shipping. I'm really sorry. No problem. So here's, yeah. so here's like the answer. I, feel, I feel like this is be turning to like car talk a little bit, you know. <laughs> oh my god! Where people you're say right. these problems and, but yeah. okay. Okay. So, so what do you think? So she she kind of like had talked about in her email to us that she sells about two hundred dollars a week, which I would consider okay. kind of like still like a hobby store. Yeah, sure. You know. Two hundred dollars is amazing, and if you're doing that every week, that's, that's you great. know eight hundred bucks a month, and that's yeah. great extra spending money to like cover bills. But it's still kind of hobbyish yeah. in my mind. So if you're making that kind of money, and someone's going to get you for fifty dollars, that's a lot of money. I can understand right. why that's really bugging you. It's a you per- good percentage of because, your sales. Because you know, because it feels like a big deal. Yeah, I personally would not call this as lady. I would be like, I made a mistake. It was my fault. Yep. If eBay's not going to back me up, I don't think me calling this Her woman at work. work 
is going to do any good because she obviously doesn't really care. And if anything, this woman could contact eBay and say I'm like harassing Being her. Being stalked, and yeah. I don't know. I'm always more thinking about the big picture. Like, right. what if this woman could hurt my store yeah. through eBay? Like, eBay suspends me because I'm a, right. a, abusive right. or something. I mean, that seems crazy, but that's but yeah, the fear I would sure. have. I would rather just eat it and and it's report the buyer to eBay. Yes. They have that... It, it's Part function. The buyer function. So it just puts gets it on their a record. So if they do this multiple times, eBay will eventually take action against right. them. I think what I might do just for my own benefit, my own peace of mind, would be to write the person one last email. Right. Just make it very personal and nice, and yeah. just try and explain, I'm a mom. I have kids. Right. I'm doing this on top of a job to make extra money. I'm doing the best I can. I've tried to work with you. Right. I'm just appealing to you yeah. to just follow through right. on what you need. And please if, send this if, item if need to the other person. And then just be done. And that's it. And then you've cleaned your side of the street or I've cleaned my side of the street. And then yeah. the other person, they have to live yeah. it's with themselves. And if they're that kind of person, then there's nothing you can do to That's like, just who they yeah. are. Yeah. I think that's good advice. That one last email, lay it all out on the line, make yourself feel better that you did everything you could apart from stalking them, yeah. you know, and just cuz I I've I've got I've felt that way before where someone wouldn't change feedback or whatever and I was like, I'm going to call them on the phone. I'm going to bug them and it's just like, no. Just Don't do it. Every hour that this person takes up of uh, my time, you know, or, or bad, it's buyer. Every hour it takes up is like a waste of my time just, yeah. because I'm not being productive or efficient or happy, you know. And the whole point of having an eBay store is to, like, not be stressed. So. Right, right. I think that's good advice. So I don't know. Other people may have other advice, but that's that's kind of what we go to is the, the big picture. Yeah. Okay, so Pat Smith asks... Do you mind talking about the economics or numbers associated with our a rental, if if that's not too personal? The reason I ask is because I cannot get a good risk, it's reward from some of the vacation type, it's rentals I've seen in my area. It's much appreciated. Um, so, you know, we've it's mentioned that we've been taking profits from our eBay business the past couple of years, pouring them into a, a vacation, a rental that we're about to get ready to rent. And uh, she's asking about the uh, numbers of how that works. Right. I think the answer is this. We don't really have good numbers to give anyone right now. We haven't started yet. I mean, if people are interested in this, I don't mind talking about it. But it's not really going to get uh, rented till next spring. That's when kind of the vacation will start up again around here. Yeah. And that's when our place will actually be is ready to rent. And I don't mind posting those. Yeah, uh, we can talk about info. those numbers when we have them. We just right. don't have them yet. I mean... Basically, it's all, like, money we've spent on the house and not <laughs> money we've made yet. Yeah, I mean, right now we've been investing rather than um, it's it's making a money on the tail end. But, right. But, but uh, I think when that starts happening, we should absolutely talk about it because right. it's definitely, you know, part of our income stream. Right. Okay. Uh, Mark, he asks a, sub, a couple of good it's questions. So Yes. Mark asks, I have a question about GoDaddy bookkeeping. In addition to my eBay income, I have a graphic design business doing t-shirt designs for silk screeners. So I use the invoice feature in GoDaddy to bill them. And here's what happens. I fill out and I print an invoice, bring it to them, and they write me a check. And then I mark that the invoice has been paid. So then it shows up on his income page in GoDaddy bookkeeping. And then I deposit the check into my bank account. And when GoDaddy updates my account, it shows that as income again. So essentially, it's doubling my income that I've received. So how would I fix this problem? So that's a great question because I have a similar problem sometimes um, where things get doubled. And you don't want your income to get doubled because unless it really is doubled, you don't want that to look like you have more income than you do. So what you can do in GoDaddy is one of the drop down menus, like when you categorize something as like, like I'll have a, a category for eBay income and uh, video income. So what you want to do is in that drop down menu, you can say hide 
duplicate it says it's called hide slash duplicate income because i think they know that sometimes stuff's gonna show up a couple times just you know because you have your accounts in there you know syncing up and stuff so um basically just hide one of them so 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 he could hide all of his invoices he could hide his invoices i think what he should do is hide the deposit because the Mm. invoices are part of the system so he can show right away that they got paid and then so as long as he labels the deposits, whatever, hidden deposits, right. then it will always be hidden, right? You might not want to do that because you don't want it to learn that every single deposit is right. hidden. So that's why I would say you would hide the, oh, the invoices. invoices so that way you just label all the invoices invoice hidden. and no invoice will ever be counted towards oh, your, true. you. Oh, know, true. Yep. Because the assumption is every invoice will have a, a, a check, check or a deposit. Yeah, so, so yeah, I wonder if there's a way to just hide that you invoice. Know, because, because the point would be is just to do it once so then the category takes care of itself so you aren't always having to hide each and everything yeah so so the the bottom line is GoDaddy lets you hide stuff that is duplicate because we have one um credit card for some reason every transaction shows up seven times yeah it's a pain so I have to hide like most of them because it's obviously a bug yeah, and again, we don't work for GoDaddy, so I mean, another thing would be GoDaddy has a pretty good help, uh, like like a forum, right? A forum where people who work there will answer its questions. We should probably ask. That's a question. one of the bugs I need to report. We should probably yeah, ask I about do. that. Um, I just haven't done it yet, but yeah. Okay, so Greg asks, uh, do are you or does anyone know the exact step by step way to offer a local pickup? From my its research, I've learned that if you have to had to offer it as an option on the it listing, it, which I did, and then ask the buyer not to pay via PayPal. I tried that twice this month, and both times the buyer said they were forced, forced to, to pay, pay yeah. through PayPal. I've yet to complete a successful local pickup and wonder if a true and verified path to success <laughs> exists. exists out there. That's a good question because that happened to us where someone bought this like record cabinet and she paid for it right away through PayPal, which is fine because I want to get the money. But it also stinks because people are like freaked out that pe- people can say item not received. And you're like, right. well, they haven't picked it up yet. That's why, you know. Well, number one with eBay, which I think kind of stinks, you when you list an item on eBay and if you want a local pickup, Local pickup can be the only thing that can happen. So it's unfortunate. You can't say lo- local pickup or, or freight or freight or mail. It's one or the other. That's why some of our items we have double listed, uh, yeah. uh, listed because some things we're willing to, to ship, but we've offered a local pickup in another one just because... Because it might be too expensive to ship. Yeah, and, people might be willing to come pick it up and save right. a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, and shipping. people write us all the time. You have this item listed twice. I'm like, I know. So far, we've always accepted PayPal, and it yeah. really, and we haven't had, haven't a, problem. had a problem. I mean, we've only done it a handful of times, but and that hasn't bothered us. It's kind of nice because they pay, and everything is the way it is. But I understand how people are like, well, what if someone picks it up, and I don't know, and then they say, I didn't get it, and then they want their money back. Right. I don't know. I, I guess it's just one of those things you're taking that chance. But I think also it's it's... I got to figure out how you can accept cash and be like, this is cash only. How about this, though? I mean, you could do it to where people could make an offer and you accept it and then they don't have to pay right away. That's true. And then they just come pick it up and they gave you cash cash. and then you just uh, mark as paid. Mark it as paid and shipped. So Greg asks another question that I think it's Ryan will be a better person to ask. He says, I ship a lot via... a FedEx, eBay includes the a FedEx costs and their monthly bill. And as I, I understand it, the amount paid is con- considered an estimate by a FedEx. So that can change wh- whether or not he paid enough It's for mm. it. He says he's never had a problem, but he's heard other people have had lots of problems where FedEx charges them more than the estimated amount. I mean, he's just uh, wondering how he can avoid that. Yes, I saw a question like that a couple weeks ago. Someone else asked this, and he he explained it more clear than they did because I had no idea what they were talking about. I was like, what? Because I've never used FedEx through eBay, so I well, didn't realize it's that. It's interesting. So him 
and I have been talking just through email, uh-huh. and I asked him about it, and he says what other people have said. He says he ships a lot of like heavier Heavy items, stuff, yeah. and he says FedEx Home is significantly cheaper than than uh, parcel. Yeah, yeah, and so that's why he does this right. FedEx. But it thing. sounds like unlike the post office, who gives you the set price that you pay for right then, FedEx is like it might be fifty dollars. Okay, but it's not a mystery. We had this issue when we mailed some stuff back to us when we were traveling around and we bought some inventory and mailed it back to ourselves. And we made the mistake of putting in the wrong zip code. Right. If you remember that? So I think that's what maybe people are having the problems with. They're not putting in the correct info. So if you put in the wrong zip codes of where things start and where they go and how heavy it is, then FedEx is going to correct that. So So... They aren't just arbitrarily changing the price. So the thing that I understand about FedEx is you need all the dimensions in the listing and the weight, the exact weight, and like you said, the very correct zip code of where it's leaving from. Is it a residence for FedEx home? Yes, it is a residence. Um, And if you have all the matching, you know, requirements, then it should be the exact price they gave you on the estimate. But see, I think the reason where people get screwed up with it's FedEx is that they're just different from the post office. Yeah. I think the post office is very, like, there's a lot of gray area. Hmm. I think once you put a label on it, you it doesn't always have to be right, and they'll still accept it, and yeah. every box isn't checked Exactly. Yeah. They're not like, this is one inch over. So I think that's why sometimes people get away with sending something heavier than what they paid for or it's bigger than what they paid for. Right. I mean, doesn't that's that That's a good point. I think FedEx, which is a commercial company, right. I think every box is checked exactly. exactly. And if it's not exactly right, they will make it exactly right for you. And what you're saying is true. When They, they also have this other uh, bit of the formula. It's not just how much it weighs plus, you know, the dimensions. They have this thing called, I think it's called like girth weight, Mm. which is a whole other calculation. You know, it's the ratio between the weight and the size plus like the fuel surcharge and all this other crap. You know, and I think it is, like we said, cheaper than parcel pose for big, heavy items. But there is all this other stuff to consider. So, well, I, I just know that at, when we uh, use it to mail stuff back to us when we're when we're out of the state, right. we now are very clear yes. and make sure we have all the information in there, right? Yeah. Because we got screwed a couple times, or we screwed ourselves, yeah, because we had the put code. the zip code in wrong, oh, and it was almost twice as much as what we yeah. thought it was going to be. Yeah, it was. But, but the mistake was ours. It was my you know? mistake. Um, another thing, too, to consider is the value of the item. Mm-hmm. If you're saying this item is worth $400, they charge you for an insurance charge. So you have to consider that as part of it as well. So those are some things to think about. Another thing, too, that you can do is look at the difference in the bill and call FedEx and be like, please, I had to call them and be like, what the hell did I do wrong? And she totally explained it to me. So that's another thing to consider. Just call them and ask them what's up. So it's interesting. I guess he sells a lot of like a CD and DVD players, which huh. are, you know, kind of big and bulky yeah, and heavier. Heavy. And he says that his FedEx home is almost always a better price. So that's... Good. That's, well, I, I like to that's hear. Interesting. We I should. like to hear that there's an option for big, bulky things mm-hmm. because parcel post is not. I think the other difference for us, though, is that we live in a rural area, as we always say. Yes. Um, we don't have an easy FedEx drop off. And right. so paying a little bit more to have it picked up from our porch through the post office is nice is so much worth the convenience oh my fee. god you know? yeah uh, and for us it costs 15 dollars to get the fedex truck to pick up from our home so we would have to have a good number of boxes to offset yeah, that cost right but uh, you Which know we don't but you know it it could be good for other things greg is on a roll here he actually has <laughs> several questions but yeah but that's good a good one and this question i really love because i like to hear what other people think Okay, he says, why does a store worth 3,500 items, like our like store, ours. why do, does, doesn't our 
stores sell exponentially more items per day versus store with 400 items like the one he has. So he knows the name of a store and he compares back and forth and sees how much we sell. And we always post our numbers too, so we're transparent about this. Um, so he says, uh, you guys sell more than me, but it seems like if I'm selling 25 items a week, we guys should be selling like 100 to, right. you know items because our store is you know so much bigger so much bigger but the fact that ebay doesn't work that way it's like one of those great unknown it, it, yep. questions like you know he's trying to figure out why okay i, w- I would love to know that answer too because i would love to sell exponentially more i mean here's the thing so there's a, a buyer or there is a seller who posts on our blog his uh, numbers each each week Stephen schultz yeah and it's amazing i mean he also has like Three or four hundred items, and he's selling as much as we do, and sometimes even a little bit more. And I'm like, w- you know, why? Like, yeah. that's like, I mean, here's a couple of things. Num- number is one is sometimes it's just the a level of scavenger people are. I mean, if you're finding awesome items every single week that sell for two and three and four hundred dollars, you're amazing, you know? Yeah. And that's awesome. I mean, the other thing is, too, you have to be careful of, you have to see how much people spend on items. Like, you can spend a lot of money on really good inventory, but not actually make pure net profit that's right. more than someone else. I right. mean, so it looks like you're selling a whole lot, but if it costs you, you a lot to buy lot that, for that stuff. you know, like, I could go out and spend $100 on items and sell them for $150 pretty easy, but I'm only making $50 on those right. items. I mean, again, it's just it's whatever math you're trying to figure out. The other thing is for us is that we are selling oftentimes really weird little items. So we are not selling the everyday practical items that might sell a lot uh, faster, like into, like a lot of electronics or video games right. or whatever. You know, we're selling the weird little vintage... Very weird stuff. Antique stuff. Yeah. So sometimes that stuff just... It's hard to know when someone's going to buy that. Yeah, it's like we said at the beginning. You know, sometimes people are buying the most random stuff and you just have no idea when someone's going to buy that. But the ultimate reason for us why uh, we think the way we do it works for us is that we had talked about earlier, is that the large inventory balances everything out. So yeah. I feel like someone that has a 400 item inventory and they're selling 25 things a week, they cannot stop putting things on eBay. You have to list right. all the time to keep up your its numbers. Like right. you're you're literally on the bleeding edge. Yeah. I think because if you stop for a month then a fourth of your store is gone. Your fourth of your store is gone and yeah. I don't think you're going to keep up those its numbers. Right. So you're always having to list it's nice for us having that large inventory. Like we said earlier, we have not really listed much the last two months, but our numbers are fairly consistent. Steady, they're steady. Yeah, exactly. And when I look at my our a yearly income, it's pretty consistent from a year ago. You know, yeah. so it's kind of nice. Uh, you know, we can never guarantee sales, but it just seems like having a larger inventory, it just kind of happens. Right. You know, I don't know why. It just seems like something's always going to sell yeah you know yeah that is that is a good point but that is a good it's question you know we found at about maybe twenty two thousand twenty five hundred items it seems like our sales weren't growing as exponentially as before and again i don't know why that is i wish i wish i was selling a hundred things a week my god there is one seller that we interviewed it's brianna Mm-hmm. Or, she does sell that much. Or it's breezy. And she has a large store. Um, it's it's close to as big as ours, I she think. It's really big. But she does sell. She sells, she sells 100 over 100 things, things a week. But she also takes offers on almost everything. everything. She's willing to take half price offers all day long. Yep. I mean, she's really about it's moving inventory. And that's. Cool. I'm a real stickler about taking a low yeah. offer. I'm a real stickler. Yeah, we're more into if we think something is worth it, we're willing to hold on to it and get the right price rather than just sell it and go. I mean, there are times where I will sell it and go. I mean, there have yeah. been times for slow weeks this last week. I'm like, yep. Do not care. Sell it. I think, too, it's just whatever kind of lifestyle you're trying to build for it yourself. 
our the way we run our store works for us. You know, we like big inventory. We like all the storage. Yeah. And we like that things just sell when they sell. But like when we interviewed, uh, it's Mr. Customer a Service who does only auctions. And his goal is to, at yep. the end of the week, all of his inventory is gone. Gone. <laughs> then he buys more inventory and he, yep. he he puts it up in an auction and all of that he is gone. He has like a bookshelf of inventory. Right. Max. Like everything is whole. But he makes good, good money. money. Yeah. But he likes that way of life. Yeah. To me, again, that's like being out on the edge. You yeah. Know? So if you miss a week or if something happens in in your life and you can't list for that week then you miss out on that mortgage payment but again he's probably balanced that with savings savings and yes exactly it's just everybody's different whatever you want whatever you freaking want Okay, so that's it for this week's It's questions that were emailed to us through uh, scavengerlife.com. Remember, too, that we, I guess we didn't do it last week, but we try and put a Q&A up every week. So it's a great place just to throw up a question and let us and everyone else have a shot at answering and talking about it. Our next podcast is an interview we have with a mystery man. It's the, a mystery coin man <laughs> yes. who had commented on our blog, and I got into a conversation it's with him. So he doesn't want to say his name, but he's willing to talk in depth about his, his process. It's super cool and interesting. So, so that's, that's the next podcast. That's coming up next. All right. See ya. Bye.